Today on uh, Talking Time Pieces, we're going to quickly explain how to use a watch time grapher. Uh, we have a more extended episode where we discuss it in a live stream uh, that we had a few weeks ago, but I thought let's make a very short video just so it gives you the basics and you understand what you need to know about a time grapher. For this demonstration, we're going to use my recently purchased uh, Rolex Air King, which is an awesome watch, and we'll see on the time grapher. So you turn it on, tells you what kind of time grapher it is, and then uh, it goes into operation. It, the, basically, the stand is a very sensitive microphone, and the device, by listening to the watch, knows what the various sounds it makes means and can give you this information in a visual display. So in the case of this watch, um, it's settling down. You see if you notice it says plus seven, plus two, now it's zero. So basically once the watch sits and it settles, um, it runs a little bit more easily. Um, also, the various angles or positions that the watch is in can also impact the um, accuracy and performance of the watch. So the rate is the plus or minus loss per day if the watch doesn't change anything at that moment. So it's a not a guarantee, it's a prediction based on current operation. The amplitude is how far back and forth the balance wheel swings with each beat, kind of like uh, how much punch is behind the tick. Uh, you want an amplitude over 270 degrees. If it starts dropping below, say, 250, you should definitely have your watch looked at. The beat error is how much off the tick is back and forth. So it rotates in one direction, rotates in the other direction, and the difference is the beat error. And you wanna be uh, 0.1 milliseconds or better. Um, you can go as high as 0.2 or 0.3 milliseconds, but a good watchmaker can regulate almost any decently made watch to 0.1 easily. Uh, and this, if you notice parameters, it bounces back and forth between 28,800, which is how many beats per hour, which means this is a four hertz watch, eight beats per second. And then the other figure is, uh, it says 52 degrees. That's what they call the lift angle. That's the amount of the arc of the swing of the balance wheel that the um, pallet fork rides on. So it's how much of the pallet forks travel is part of the balance wheels motion. And that's actually more for a watchmaker to uh, discern and uh, do something with. Uh, for an average user, the important thing is to keep an eye on the amplitude and the rate. You want the rate to be good and you want the amplitude to be oh, in, you know, in the high 200s, 260, 270, 280, 310 would be really cool. But as long as you're above uh, 270, you're in great shape. And if you notice, the, the uh, now we're showing zero, the watch is, you know, just literally settling down. But then I touched it and boom, now we're back up again. That's what shows you how it's a very, uh, it, it's a fleeting measurement. You know, none of the measurements on a watch are cast in stone. It's a mechanical device. But at least now you know what all of the various functions are. If you like the content, please uh, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.